Welcome to Just Men, a life-changing program that resonates hope as well as encouragement. The program that gives you information and inspiration for the glory of God. I'm your host, Jeff Tate, and thank you for joining Just Men. On today's program, we have a very special guest. This is his first time being on Just Men. Please welcome Brother Dwayne Roberts. Brother Roberts, welcome to Just Men. Jeff, thank you, sir. Bless you, man, for this opportunity. I do. I appreciate it. I just thank God for you. Man, I thank yeah. God for you, yeah, brother. Man. Let me say on the onset, yeah. you add value to just men. And we just, as they say, chop it up, turn mm -hmm. the pages. Mm -hmm. We're going to dive deep. Yeah. Yeah. And I know your life story mm -hmm. and some of the things that is driving your heart. And we're just excited about what God is going to say and speak through you. But before we start turning those pages, okay. just share just a brief bio on who is Dwayne Roberts. Um, I am a child of God. Um, Coming into knowing that I'm a child of God, mm -hmm. um, you you're looking at someone that grew up in church, and for the most part, that's just what I did. I just grew up in church. Um, I didn't understand. Uh, I just I thought it was something that you had to do. I, that, that's when I recognized my first drug problem. Uh, that my mother used to drug me to church every Sunday. Uh, so um, so that's what I grew up with. Yeah. Uh, my mother uh, taught me every value, principle uh, that a child could need. Uh, she taught knowledge, wisdom. Uh, she gave an, uh, an explanation for everything that she wanted done. She didn't just say, uh, Dwayne, this is what you're going to do. She followed it up with reason and why. And, you know, and that helped me. Uh, with that being said, I still made some choices and decisions uh, um, that were totally against the values of her, what I knew, um, and, you know, I've paid the consequences, as I should have, um, but God has been so merciful and so gracious with me that he's given me numerous uh, opportunities to get back in line with him, and so that's where I'm at, and and it isn't any place I'd rather be. Mm. Yeah. Let's talk about the power of one word. Mm -hmm. And the power of the word is yes. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about yes in your life. Mm. Uh, yes in my life meaning, uh, for me, that means saying, God, I am not only okay with what you're trying to do for me, I'm okay with what you want me to do mm -hmm. and what you want me to be. Uh, because there is a real, the opposite of yes is no. And to be honest, Jeff, there were years in my life when I intentionally said no to God. Mm -hmm. not, not by mistake, it, you know, didn't happen by circumstance. I made a decision, you know, whether I was going to follow God or not. And I said no. So I need to say that because God knows that I said no. So I can tell you I said yes early on, and that wouldn't be the truth. And he knows my truth. So I need to say that because there once more and again, he gave me an opportunity. He still cared for me. He still loved on me. He was still there for me. Uh, even with him hearing me say no just beyond my imagination. Like now, I'm like, wow, can I do that? Am I capable of doing that? Somebody saying no to you, Dwayne, and you saying no matter what, yes. So now my life with God is yes. God, you've proven yourself beyond needing to do anything else for me. And even with that being said, he still continues to do things for me. That's wow. the yes for me. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Share with me on your heart in terms of this road to Damascus in your yeah. life, man. Share yeah. a bit about this, this pathway that you were on and how it took sort of a blinding light uh, to bring you into what some would call awakening. Talk with me about that pathway. Absolutely. Um, and that's what it took. Uh, and, of course, God knew what I needed. He knew what it would take before I knew what it would take, uh, and even before I became willing. And I can't say that I was willing. He just did what he, he, just did what he did. Mm -hmm. 
And um, but you know I was, you know I, when I was younger, um, I wanted to do what I saw, and I wanted to be what I saw. And what I saw was um, quick things made, um, whether it was money. I mean, I, I can recall back seeing when I was like about 10 years old, remember one of the guys in my neighborhood just come home from college. And when he came home from college, I was so in awe and just like, wow. And I was like, man, he's graduated from college. The, the thing of it is, I didn't know anybody else in my neighborhood that had. And when I saw him, I didn't necessarily see hope because there wasn't a, a regular occurrence. He was the exception. Mm -hmm. And it still seems so far for me to imagine that, wow, that I could do that. And so that never entered into my belief system that I could do that at that age. Um, so, but I wanted to still be accepted by uh, the majority, and the majority weren't going to college. And, and to do that, uh, I wanted to be cool, I wanted to be hip, I wanted to be liked, uh, I wanted to be known. Um, and so I did what, 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 they, what they took, and what they took meant that I didn't set the rules, I mean, I just followed the rules. Uh, the broken rules, the, the set rules of, you know, of the street, the neighborhood, and the community. And so, you know, I, I indulged in uh, experiment with marijuana. Uh, when I was 13, I was started uh, my first purchase of uh, cocaine. Um, by the time I was 18, I was starting to use heroin. Uh, so this, was, this had become my life. Uh, I, I thought that it was, uh, I thought I was clever. I thought that, oh, well, since I'm going to use, I might as well sell. I might as well try to fund my fund. Mm -hmm. uh, but in fact, after a while, you know, it just, it got to a point where uh, it was no longer recreational. Uh, using drugs became, a, it was a job before I was employed. That wasn't, you know, so, um, and, that, and, and, and it served me, uh, it gave me my consequences. Uh, I've been in jail, been in medium security, uh, penitentiary, so I've had to pay the consequences for my decisions. But those were my decisions, poor decisions. Uh, and so we get a choice all the time to make a, make a decision. So your decision making and choices you make are vital. But he did, he, 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 he spared me when he slapped me. <laughs> yes, he did. And um, he gave me an opportunity once I had probably hadn't, I had been incarcerated for two years, hadn't been out like six months, and was really looking at potentially going back because I was in a house selling drugs and Metro police came by. There was like about 15, 20 of them. And they was banging on the door, knocking on the door. And, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, look where you finna end up back at. Mm -hmm. And and so I opened the door and to my surprise, they had a warrant and they showed me a picture of somebody and they said, uh, uh, where is he at? Now, mind you, right before they showed me the picture, I'm just praying like, oh God, I'm speaking up under my breath and saying, God, I, please don't let my demeanor show that I know this individual. But when they showed me the picture, I had no clue. So literally, it's the first time I ever told the police the truth. Mm -hmm. First time. So when I first tell them the, tr uh, the truth, they don't believe me. But other times I wasn't being honest, they was, you know, they was believing me. So, but uh, um, you know, long story short, um, that ordeal right there, um, it, I was in, you know, they, they came on into the house and it was a, a lady officer and a gentleman officer. Uh, and, and what I deem as they was playing the good cop, bad cop role. One was screaming at me and one was being gentle with me. One was screaming at me, one was being gentle with me. And the lady cop was being really nice with me. And so, of course, my focus is more to that. But she asked me, she said, if I asked you to dispose of these uh, drugs, could you? And when she said that, I'm thinking to myself, uh, I don't know what kind of setup this is. Uh, 
to myself, I'm thinking this. I don't know what kind of self this is. And I said, no. And sh then she screamed at me. So this is the first time she screamed at me. And she said, what? She said, if I ask you to get rid of this, you can't. And, and now I'm thinking, well, I just said no. So that must have been the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll say yes. <laughs> and I said, yes, I can. And she said, that's the smart answer. So sh she allowed me to grab the drugs while in handcuffs and go to the toilet and flush them. Now, I'm still baffled. And to some degree, I'm really frightened because I don't know what is going on. This is not normal. I know this is not normal, uh, but what's going on? And so uh, they, they left probably about 10 minutes later. And she, she had told me, she said, you done well. And I'm like, okay, so, so what's the deal now? So, but the other gentleman that was, had been hollering at me, uh, he said, you know, we got your ID. I'm giving you three days to turn this guy in that was on, that wanted, um, that had a warrant for. And I'm like, okay. But I'm just really just wanting them to leave. Uh, just really want them out of my presence. And so uh, they said, do not forget. They gave me a card and they said, in three days, if we don't hear from, we come pick you up. And I'm like, but well, they have my ID. Uh, they know where I'm at, you know, and I'm like, and so I'm just, I'm just really in this frenzy. And, um, and so the three days passed, uh, just know there was some of the scariest three days. Uh, and then a week passed. And then a week uh, after that, probably a week later, uh, I had a friend of mine that had came by to pick up uh, my brother to take him to a recovery meeting. And, and he asked, he said, hey, man, we're going to a meeting. You want to go? I'm thinking, well, I ain't working. I, in my mind, I'm running mm -hmm. from the law. Mm -hmm. I, I got to start doing something different. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took him up on that offer. And I went to the meeting. And that started me on my journey of recovery. Mm -hmm. It did. It started my journey of recovery. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you something. Within three months, uh, I didn't have three months clean. And I just left a meeting and was at a coffee shop. And while at that coffee shop, I see this police officer car pull up and out comes the lady, the police officer that had had me in handcuffs and was, I started sweating. And I'm like, see, I'm now finna pay for all my wrongs. That's what I'm, I'm really, that's what I, I say. Oh my God, I'm finna pay for all my wrongs. So I'm with the uh, friends and I'm telling them, please get me away from here. I, I need to go. And they honestly are in fear that I'm actually attempting to really just go back out and use. They're not thinking that, they don't really know my trouble right uh -huh. now. Mm -hmm. But so they said, no, what's, what's wrong? Uh, just tell us what's wrong, I said. And I'm just adamant, I'm like, just get me away from here, I just need to go. And I see uh, the lady officer come on up the steps and go into the coffee shop. And I'm like, this is my move. I said, you all take me away from around here now or I'm just leaving. And they said, just tell me. So I just expressed to one of them, I said, well, that lady officer that just got out of the car. I said, look, it wasn't even three months ago. I said, they got a warrant out for me. I said, they the, they the ones that had been handcuffed. Now, I said, they told me to call them in three days, and I never did. I said, I, I got to leave. And I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not ready to deal with this right now. And, uh, and who would know? Uh, one of my friends told me, said, Dwayne, if you're talking about her, she's not she's not coming over here to, to do anything to you. She has seven years clean. Mm -hmm. So the officer was in recovery. Mm -hmm. So God was already working in the midst. Mm -hmm. God was already working in the midst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. You know, you, I mean, there's not much to say about the grace of God mm -hmm. and how our performance is not a criteria or our behavior is not a criteria mm -hmm. of his acceptance Amen. of us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. uh, an unconditional love mm -hmm. that nothing we can do mm -hmm. separate us from him mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. and i think many are going through life uh feeling guilt mm -hmm. feeling condemnation mm -hmm. feeling the weight Mm -hmm. of their behavior mm -hmm. and not understanding the 
the weight of his love mm -hmm. that supersedes mm -hmm. it all mm -hmm. and says, I don't see your fault. Mm -hmm. I see the blood of Christ who cleanses and washes you and made you perfect in him. Mm -hmm. uh, the word says, by him we are the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. right? Through him. Mm -hmm. And we keep seeing ourselves as something else. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. You said, man, anytime I get an opportunity mm -hmm. to share yeah. <laughs> about the glory of God Amen. and the grace of God, I'm going to be there. Yeah. Talk about his glory. Uh, he deemed me worthy of his glory because I don't, I, you know, I had to get to a point where I, I had to come to believe that I was worthy of this love that he's given me because I know what I've done. Mm -hmm. I know where I've been. And like, it's hard for me to fathom, like, how does one do this? But of course, you know, his, his love surpasses our understanding. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I have to remember, like, um, I won't get to his level, and uh, and if I if he would have let me, I I'd, I would believe that I was him, and that I was capable, of, you know, uh, making the judgments on anybody, and I'm not, and that's not a right that I have, man. His glory has been, and I to speak speak from personal experience, uh, it has lifted me out of the sewers of life. It has lifted me out of the ruins of life. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, of course, uh, he's still developing me. And that's not me uh, giving a pass on me. That's just me being patient with me. And if I follow his example, I, I should be patient with me. Look how patient he was. He's with me. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I'm impatient with me. And I, I don't want anybody to believe that you need to feel a rush to do something to... Uh, if you if you allow him to lead your life, he has the stages and the steps and the chronological order that he's going to do. These things are going to unfold for you. So, you know, don't beat yourself up. You know, yes, you will go through these emotions. These are the emotions that he gave us. So we, we go through some some shame and some guilt and some embarrassment. I, I surely have. There's some there's so many things that I'm. I'm extremely unproud that I've done and, and people that I've hurt. Um, and so those are things that I've taken to him and asked for his forgiveness mm -hmm. and asking him to show me how can, uh, show me the correct, correct me. And so I have, I'm, I'm all right with him chastising me, uh, correcting me. Uh, it's been all out of love. It's been all out of love. How, how does one... Uh, and you know, and, you know, you you had a gentleman here, and speaking of the pruning, uh, it, it's it's uncomfortable. But you know, but I put myself in a lot of uncomfortable positions, and he's he hasn't he hasn't had the need to, but he's made some things comfortable for me. Now, like what what makes me so deserving of that? Mm -hmm. uh, oh my goodness, he, he, my goodness, he has just been. Uh, all that I need, all that I want, uh, and and it took a it took some time getting there about knowing that's what I want is Him, and letting Him mm -hmm. fill me uh, up, making me complete, not having voids uh, that that I used to substitute with whether it was drugs, sex, money, uh, what, what you know, you know, just what you people would think of me, perceive me to be. Uh, Man, he's been, he's, he is the, he's the new high, mm -hmm. and, and he is in the highest place, uh, and man, getting connected with him has sustained me uh, with joy, uh, man, true joy, true happiness, you know, sincerely, you don't, none that goes away after 24 hours, mm -hmm. uh, after my money run out, mm -hmm. after friends run out, uh, he is steady there. He's there. Mm. He's there. Wow. Yeah, he's there. Beautiful. He's there. You know, the word talks about Paul, uh, talks about the thorn in his side, and three times mm -hmm. he asked God to remove. And 
of course, the word talks about that his grace is sufficient, mm -hmm. uh, that his, he's made perfect, you know, in, in this point of chastising, how God comes forth because the, the outward man begins to, to fade mm -hmm. because of the increase of the inward man. Mm -hmm. And you said something about that you wouldn't want people to, you know, when we were out in the world, in the club, it was yeah. like, look at me, look at me. And Absolutely. now it's about look through me yeah. and really see the essence of the light that shines inside of me, the light that mm -hmm. lights the world, the salt that preserves mm -hmm. the earth, uh, you know, the Christ within, mm -hmm. the hope of glory that mm -hmm. dwells inside of us, who is our very life, our very essence. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you talked about, you mentioned something about the approval of people. Yeah. And I know that many times that form of addiction has this way of being masked even in religion where people are really not pursuing um, the, the presence of God, the face of God, but really it's to, to fulfill the traditions of men, the approval of, of people, and to be validated, to get value, to get significance through man. Talk a little bit about uh, that level of awakening now that you've been pulled into a new addiction with God. How do you maintain uh, that level of commitment to God when you still have those same spirits that try to attach itself to you and pull you away from the legitimacy of your relationship? Jeff, let me uh, share with you, you know, I, um, I've been blessed uh, with employment. Now, that may sm sound like a small thing to somebody, but uh, when I had the life that I have, um, you know, I'm, you're looking at someone with uh, multiple felonies. Uh, so we know the uh, corporate community is not always uh, apt to jump to hire someone uh, with a background that is marked uh, uh, with felonies. And uh, I just thank God for his mercy and his grace that uh, he's put me in a place, in a position that uh, it's not what's viewed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, he, he has been the best example to say, Dwayne, that's okay. I, I know your past. That's not what, that's not even what's going to hold you back. That's not something that you will be able to use to say that's held you back. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll lift you above that. And so once I, I know uh, what God has done for me, uh, he, I, I'm in a position to where I work at a church. Uh, and so I'm always in the public side. And I'm, I'm one of the first people people will see when they're coming through the door. Uh, so I know that uh, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know that when you come into the house of God, uh, that really his presence is there. Not, not just by name or, mm -hmm. or you've been driven here, or you've been influenced to come here. Uh, I want you to feel God's presence here, uh, and I want it to show up through me. But when you see me, I don't really want you to see me. Mm -hmm. I want you to see something that's deeper in me, and I want you to see the God in me. And that is something I'm, oh my goodness, I'm so proud to say that he lives within me. I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, it, it just brings joy to me just knowing that, he's, that he lives within me. And... Um, and so uh, I did an article, uh, our church, it puts out a, a, a magazine uh, semi-annually, and uh, they did an article on me, and I can remember one of the uh, questions that the editor asked me during the interview and said, what do you want, uh, what is it that you want people to, to know, Dwayne? Uh, and I said that everything you, you see good that you want to kind of acknowledge me for that's good, uh, that is God. That is God. That is not me. Uh, so God, oh my good, He is an everlasting presence in my life, uh, and I appreciate and uh, my wife that supports me in this ministry work. Where it's not just a job; it's a ministry. Uh, when you encounter God's people. Uh, you need to look like you represent him. You need to look like offspring of your heavenly father. So I, I want people to say, oh, and I want people, I, I, I enjoy seeing people that knew me from when I wasn't being obedient to God. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not a, a look at Dwayne. 
uh, look at, you know, look at him. I want you to see, look at me, but you say, wow, he has changed, mm -hmm. completely has changed. You, you, you see how much he's changed. I, I want you to see that uh, the connection that I have with God. I want you to see the the God on me, the God in me. Um, my wife is very supportive of like, uh, because I'm always ripping and running and, and church, church will keep you busy. Ministry work will keep you busy. I'm involved in uh, our mental health and substance abuse ministry at our church. Um, uh, and, and what I want people to know is that recovery is real. Mm -hmm. Now I don't want you to think that, you know, uh, recovery is real. And if you need help, uh, there is help. Uh, we have, there's a, a red line um, here in Tennessee where, uh, you know, there's help out there. And um, God just afforded me the, the help that I needed. He really did. Wow. You know, we got to have you back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so us to expound more and more. Yeah. You said something that pricked my heart when you said he lives in me. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we truly understand the living in me part. Mm -hmm. Um, when Moses, when Gideon, when David, mm -hmm. when they all were going through a trying time, the word says the spirit came upon them mm -hmm. and they were empowered to fulfill that which was in front of them or that that they had overcome. But now mm -hmm. that same spirit mm -hmm. that they had for a moment lives inside of you. 24 7 in fact he dwells yes. inside of you so you yeah. always have yeah. the same power of Gideon and the same power of Moses mm -hmm. in the wilderness and the same power of David and mm -hmm. the same power that 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 engulfed yeah. them for yeah. a moment now lives inside of you Paul says don't you know in first Corinthians chapter 6 that that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you mm -hmm. He lives in you. Mm -hmm. Last word of encouragement. Jeff, let me, let me thank you. I want to thank God for keeping uh, a gentleman as yourself, a brother in Christ, uh, on the right path, speaking to you, allowing you to live his truth as well, mm -hmm. and the power that is within you, mm -hmm. and that he lives within you. I, I want to acknowledge that because uh, I know we need to encourage uh, other brothers, uh, other gentlemen, uh, because we hit up our houses, we hit up our homes, and our wives uh, alongside of us uh, support us, our children are watching us, uh, people in the community are watching us, so we have to do our best. So I want to just thank God for you and ask for continuous blessings over you, uh, you and your family, mm -hmm. and this ministry work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. But I want people to know that there is hope, there's recovery, there's God. <laughs> Man, there, there is truth. There, you have your truth. You're worth, you're valuable. God loves you. You are His. He does love you. 